We're not sorry for being Muslim. And we don't apologize for anything that Allah has revealed in His book or that has been instructed in the Sunnah of the Prophet We don't have to owe any, anyone else an explanation. We don't have to be embarrassed or ashamed that your book says this, this, and this. How can you believe that? Your Prophet said this, this, and that. How can you believe that? How can you agree with that? There are people that constantly try to put us in this position and we feel like we have to defend ourselves and sometimes we don't know the answer. And sometimes we hear things being said about our Prophet ﷺ, or things being quoted from the Qur'an, and somebody will ask you, this sounds pretty barbaric, this sounds pretty violent, this sounds pretty inhumane or unjust. How can you be okay with that? You people actually believe this stuff? You guys think this is okay? And at first, when you hear it, you're like, well, you know, technically, we're no, we're not okay with it. And you take a step back. And it's okay to say, I don't understand any better. But it's not okay to say, well, if that's what it says, I disagree. Because we don't disagree. Everything in this book, everything Allah has revealed, is not only something that we believe in, even if we're uncomfortable. First of all, there's no room for discomfort. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ You know, لَا يَجِدُ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتِ They don't have any room for any discomfort in their chest left after whatever decisions you've made. This is what, who we are in Islam. This is what makes us Muslim. Not only do we not have discomfort, but we're happy before Allah for everything He revealed. It is not a source of discomfort for us, it is a source of joy. فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Because of the Qur'an, they should be overjoyed. Every ayah of the Qur'an is part of my iman and part of your faith. Every ayah of the Qur'an should bring me joy. I should be happy to believe in it. I should be proud to believe in it. I should have confidence in it. And it's a problem when you and I start thinking, there are some things we should be worried about. They say it in the Qur'an. Allah says it in the Qur'an. How am I going to explain this to someone else? Oh man, if a non-Muslim asks me, I'm in trouble. You know? And we take a back foot. This is actually a point of shame for myself and for you. That we don't know what Allah's book says. And when we don't understand what Allah's book says, we don't make an effort to explain it. That's the first thing I wanted to bring to your attention before we deal with the subject matter itself. The second thing I want to bring to your attention is this is the book not just of guidance, but of fitrah. Allah revealed this book for the benefit of humanity. And as a matter of fact, even jinn can benefit as far as Allah is concerned. And when He revealed this book, He knows exactly who He sent it to. He sent it to the creation He made Himself. Doesn't He know who He created? Allah will not give you and me instructions without knowing who we are first. And He knows us better than we know ourselves. You know when someone gives you instructions and you can say, well, if they understood my situation, they would give different instructions. Sometimes your boss can ask you to do something and you can say, well, you know what? Right now I have these other, other things I have to do. You don't understand those. If I wish he understood my situation and then gave me these instructions, maybe his mind would change. Maybe there's some room for negotiation. Nobody knows what you're going through, what your life is like, what your situation is like, what your capabilities are like better than Allah. And Allah is the one who gave you and me these instructions. So he knows exactly who he's talking to and what he needs to say. This is perfect for all human beings. This is also part of my iman. This is part of my faith. And for me to think that Allah will say something that is not for my own benefit. This is also, it goes against my own faith. Allah will never tell me or you anything unless that is beneficial for us. This book is an act of mercy from Allah. It's an act of rahmah from Allah. This is why he says, Ar-Rahmanu Allam Al-Qur'an. Of all the names of Allah associated with teaching the Qur'an, you know, he could have just said, Al-Aziz Allam Al-Qur'an. The authority taught the Qur'an so that you take the Qur'an as an authority. No, but he described himself as the teacher who is Ar-Rahman. Excessively, overwhelmingly merciful and loving and caring. He's the one who taught the Qur'an. So when he teaches it, he's teaching it out of love, out of care, out of mercy. So even if at face value you see something and you find it harsh, actually even in that there is a mercy for you. And so with that in mind, what I want to share with you is that the ahkam, the rulings of Allah, the governance of Allah, the commands of Allah, when we don't understand them, we might think they're harsh. But when you actually understand them, and you should not try to understand them because you want to explain them to someone else. You should understand them for yourself. That is the wrong reason to learn something. So what I want to share with you is not so you have something good to say to your non-Muslim co-worker. We don't owe them an explanation first. We owe ourselves an explanation because we owe ourselves the obligation to understand the Book of Allah better. When we do that first, then naturally it will come from our heart that we will want to share its goodness with others. You know? If, you, if the only reason you want to learn about Islam is public relations, there's a problem. 
This is not the reason you should want to learn about Islam. Just so you can make less embarrassing conversation with your non-Muslim friends. That's not the reason.